Okay, I want to talk to you briefly um, about Echo. As we finished up, I don't want to just drop it. I want to make sure that you caught some of the things in there. You do not have to write out the answers to these questions, but I am going to look um, over the last questions with you, and we're going to talk about them a little bit. Um, it says, how did Ivy save um, his life? Meaning, well, wait a minute, let me back up. One of the questions was... Let's see. Um, what happened to the two schools in California? So you got that the two schools in Ivy's story were eventually combined and that they won their battle um, to have equal schools. And then um, it says, why did Kenny buy Ivy a flute? So remember that he um, said that she saved his life. And so she, he bought her a flute. It was the least he could do. Well, how did she save his life? You caught that whole story about the harmonica, right? She gave him the harmonica. The harmonica was in his pocket. And when he was shot on the battlefield, that bullet went into the harmonica and mangled the harmonica, but saved his life. And then he went, and when he was in the hospital, he talked about three women that were kind of fussing over him and trying to help him to live and begging for his life. And then he meets the nurse Elizabeth. Remember, this is Friedrich's sister. And Elizabeth says, there were no three other girls. Maybe you were hallucinating. What are you talking about? And um, so we know that those three girls are the three girls uh, from the fairy tale story at the very beginning, right? The ones in the woods that um, blew into Otto's harmonica and helped him helped him find his way out. And they're lost from their family by this curse, right? So um, now it's those three sisters. Because remember, part of the breaking of the curse was that uh, life would need to be saved. And so it was that... That harmonica caught that bullet, but whether he lived or died was, was important to the sisters, right? Okay, and then it says on the epilogue, the three sisters, Otto and all the players, who would one day breathe in and out of this unusual instrument, were joined by the silken thread of destiny. I love that phrase. The silken thread of destiny. The idea that they are all woven together through this invisible thing that they can't see. Have you ever seen movies when you know that people are involved in the same story, but they don't know it? Like they keep passing each other on the sidewalk, but they don't know who the other person is or that one day they will be, um, they will be, their stories will be involved. I th that's why history is so cool, because I think that we're all in this together. All of our stories are interwoven, but we can't see it. And it's because it's not all by chance. We have a God. Just like this story is so beautiful. Okay, why is this story so beautiful that all of them are almost like you braid, right? And you braid and one goes this way and this way and this way. They're woven together. Why? Because there is an author doing it on purpose, right? That author has said, oh, I want this to interweave here and here and here. And she has created a beautiful picture of how people affect each other and they can be connected. Guess what? We have an author and he has created our story even more beautifully than any human author could. That's where human authors get it. The greatest story of all is the human story which God created. And it flows out of his creativeness to weave all of us together. So isn't that cool? To see it in an author is amazing because it reminds me that God is doing the same thing with my story. Isn't that cool? God is doing the same thing with your story. And for whatever reason, we were woven together this year. And I am so glad that you have become a part of my story and I have become a part of your story. Isn't that cool? And it says, where did the harmonica come from? Remember, um, Otto 
didn't you love that last story with Otto? So Otto has his harmonica from all those years ago that those three girls blew into. And he was supposed to turn in those 13 harmonicas. And his 13th one got chewed up by the dog. So he sends the good one in to be the 13th. But he puts an M on it to mark it. And it's Messenger. And the name of the book that he was given when he was a kid was called the 13th Harmonica of Auto Messenger. And isn't that cool? Before Otto even knew about the 13th Harmonica, there was a book about it. And that, to me, is what God does, too. Remember I said the other day in Psalm 139 that all of my days are written in your book? Before we even know anything, God has, it's the 13th harmonica of auto messenger. God has written down our story and we are living it out. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that allow you to live with freedom and encouragement, knowing that God is there with you? That is so cool. And then how was the spell broken when, when Kenny lived? And it said she she pulled that together so well at the end of the book. In that magical moment when Kenny lived, they were back where they needed to be. And all of these things were woven, but yet at the same time planned from the beginning. That is an author creating it, but that is an author reflecting what the great one author is doing in your life. He has written it down. It is done. It is, and he is, at the same time it's done, it's still unfolding. The Bible is full of those two-way things, that I am perfect, but me being made perfect. So it is done, but being made done at the same time. And we can live in joy. The more we read, that's why reading is so cool. The more we read, we see echoes of who God is. There's the name of the book, Echo. We see echoes of who God is in all stories, in all of creation. And the more you read, you'll be able to pick it out, even when the author didn't realize he was putting it there, because they are reflecting a creator that created them to tell the biggest story there is, and that is about God and his glory. So I hope that as you read new books, that as you, that you look for those things that even those authors don't realize they're putting in there. And that you can have encouragement and excitement as you see that. I love this book. And now I just realized, why is it called Echo? Because it is an echo of how God writes our stories. And I don't care what the author thinks. That's what I think. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.